Hi, everyone. Today, let's go over the economic calendar for this week. And then I have a boatload of long-term charts to go over, which will give us a lot of good perspective going into the coming months. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. I make videos like this almost every day, so make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. On the weekends, I go over the longer-term charts, the weeklies and the monthlies, in order to give us perspective on where we are in terms of ranges and how we should be biasing our trades. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. Starting off with the economic calendar for this week, you can see we have home builders on Monday. Not a big report, but it is interesting. Building permits and housing starts, also interesting on Tuesday. We have the current federal deficit, which does feed into inflation a little bit. It's good to know. And then we have consumer confidence here. This is pretty interesting. We're expecting consumer confidence to go up on Wednesday versus the 100.2 that we had on the previous report. I can't imagine that we're going to get a higher consumer confidence. I would expect this is going to be a little bit lower, and I think that might actually affect the markets a little bit. So that'll be one to watch at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Moving over to Thursday, we have jobless claims once again and continuing jobless claims, giving us that indicator of economic strength. And then the big one here for this week, we have PCE price index and core PCE price index, as well as PCE price index year over year and core PCE price index year over year. So a lot of big PCE data coming out on Friday. That'll be a good, that should give us some foreshadowing of future inflation. We also have durable goods, again, another economic indicator. And then we have new home sales at 10 a.m. that same day. So quite a bit of good data on Friday and a little bit on Wednesday and Thursday. Not a huge week, but definitely interesting. Moving over to the charts, starting with the SPX on the one month view. This is on the log chart, so you can draw some really good long term trend lines. We have the dot com highs here. We have the 2007 highs, that mid 2014 15 high. Zooming in here, we have the pre COVID high and the COVID low. Then we have the current downtrend. You can see momentum on the monthly chart is actually fading here slightly, very slightly from November to December, though. And you can see on the RSI, we did get slightly above the 50, and then we're moving back through the 50 here. That usually demonstrates that you're going to have continuing lows. And then you can see the August to September push down here, where you got that increasing red bar and then another increasing red bar right into that 55 month moving average which is currently sitting at 35.17. So still quite a bit lower than where we are right now. If we did come down and touch that, would be a big push down. We're still currently on this trend. At this point, you have to expect on the monthly chart that you're going to come back and retest this trend line, which is certainly slightly higher than it was for that October low. And that currently coincides with the high from August of 2020 right in that 36 to 3700 range. Obviously, this is the monthly chart, so you can't really trade off it, but it's good to see where you are. Jumping down to the weekly view to get a little bit better perspective here, you can see momentum is fading to the upside, and you should expect this to continue to roll over for the next few weeks, similar to what we had here from August into October. So that took about two months to finish that move down. And we're just getting started here. We've had our first two negative green bars on the MACD. Again, similar move. We got just above that 50 line on the RSI, and then we broke right through it. Once again, got above the 50 line and we broke through it. So expect this to move quite a bit further based on these weekly charts. Again, watching that 36 to 3700 range, if we do break through that, you have to expect that we're going to break through this level of resistance. That will be the second test of that point. Potentially, it could hold, but I would expect it to break if we did get all the way down to that level. And then if we get through there, then we should be looking to that pre-COVID high, which is still at 3400, which is a level people have been talking about for a while. Certainly potential we're coming into that zone if we get a push further down like we did in August. Moving over to the NASDAQ or DNQ on the monthly chart. Similar story here. Momentum's fading slightly, but it's basically at the same point as it was in November. If this move down continues, you would expect this December bar to be a little bit accelerated versus the previous month. We didn't even quite get to the 50 line on the RSI, so you should expect this to continue to the downside on the longer term charts. Again, we have the pre-COVID highs sitting 
just above 9,000 or so. We haven't touched 10,000 yet. We stopped just above it here. And at this point on the longer term charts, you should expect the NASDAQ to continue with this trend and come into that 10,000 level and potentially retest those COVID highs. In the medium term, I don't expect that move. I don't think we're going to get that far on this push down. But on the longer term, we still have to like, respect this downtrend. And if we get an acceleration here in December, then we should expect January to be even lower based on the monthly charts. Zooming into that weekly view here, you can see this looks very negative. Two big down weeks. Momentum here looking very similar to what it looked like in August. In fact, quite get as high as it did in August. But definitely rolling over here, we've had two weeks of weakening momentum and it's stepping down quite fast. Should expect we have at least one or two more weeks before we cross the zero line here. And then we're going to get probably two or three weeks of downward movement after that, similar to what we had here. So we had two weeks, two more weeks of still green, but moving down. And then we had four weeks of solid red movement before we started to get that cool off. And that's really what I'm expecting here as well. It's also worth noting here that we're about to get all the moving averages in lockstep. So we have the 9, the 22, right now it's the 144, and then we have the 55 just above that. In the coming weeks, we're going to see that 55 cross through that 144, and then we'll have all of the EMAs in lockstep. And that's definitely not a good indicator for bulls in the market right now. Moving over to the Russell on the monthly view, very similar, continuing downtrend, although the momentum to the downside is fading slightly more here. You can see we hit a significantly lower level. We already retested those pre-COVID highs, which are actually slightly lower than the highs we had in September of 2018. And that's about where we are right now at that same level, sitting at about 1750 on the Russell index. At this point, certainly expecting a retest of this next level of support, which is about at 1700 on the monthly chart. And looking at that MACD, we're still in a little bit stronger position versus the other major indices. And then looking at the RSI here, you can see we hit that 50 line right on time. And then we're moving down here. Definitely not a good indicator of higher prices. And you should expect that the Russell is going to move down potentially even to this next level of support, which is currently at 1550. Zooming into the weekly view, you can see similar to the other major indices, we've had two weak green bars here came up above that 50 level and we're moving down. Definitely an indicator of lower prices. Again, expecting 17, maybe even slightly lower, 1680 as that next level of support. Certainly potential that that could hold here. The push from the August high to the October low was not very extended on the Russell because the Russell has sold off quite a bit and it's already at some pretty low prices compared to the other major indices. But you should still expect lower prices here. And again, you have the 55 getting pretty close to below that 144. And that's definitely not an indicator of higher prices in the near future. Moving over to the NASDAQ divided by the S&P 500. You can see we have all of the EMAs in lockstep here. We got the cross quite a few weeks ago on the week of 19 September. However, the momentum to the downside is fading slightly here. This could certainly turn into a very slow downtrend. But right now, the NASDAQ and the S&Ps are moving in pretty much lockstep to the downside, meaning that this ratio is kind of moving sideways, at least here in the short term. Moving over to the NASDAQ divided by the Russell, actually getting a little bit of bullish momentum here on the NASDAQ versus the Russell, which is the same to the S&Ps. Like I said, the NASDAQ and the S&Ps are moving pretty much the same right now, meaning that the Russell is showing some weakness versus the other two. It is worth noting that we did get this big spinning top here this week and that this bullish momentum might be very weak, similar to what we had here in July going into August, and that this could be another move down. This trend is still definitely to the downside, and the Russell might show some strength going into the next two weeks or so, just hasn't over the last five weeks. Moving over to the SPX divided by gold, you can see this is definitely moving to the downside. We've had three strong weeks of downward movement, momentum growing here to the downside, RSI fading off of that 50 line, gold definitely demonstrating strength versus all of the markets right now. Zooming out a little bit, you can see we did just get below that trend as well. So big trend line break. We don't get a pop up above this next week. You should expect gold to do significantly better than equities going forward. Moving over to XLY, consumer discretionary on the weekly chart. You can see this looks very weak and it looks like we're rolling over here. The November high was very muted and it looks like we're about to break the lows next week. So you should expect this to roll over pretty significantly. We're already pretty much at that pre-COVID high and it looks like we're going lower here. Next level of support I would be looking for for consumer discretionary here would be right around that 123.50 level. 
And looking at the MACD, you can see it hasn't had a lot of momentum here recently, but it's definitely moving to the downside here. We didn't hit the 50 line, but we are moving down on the RSI, and you would expect it into oversold conditions based off how weak this rally was in November and how bad this rollover here looks right now. Moving over to XLP on the weekly chart, you can see we touched resistance at that 7750 level. We expected it to fail there. We touched it just barely this week, and then we moved down pretty significantly. MACD is definitely moving to the downside. Definitely a good indicator to get short here or at least exit your long positions. If we do get the cross of the 50 line here on the RSI, that would be an indicator that this is definitely going to move a little bit lower than we thought. Currently, I'm expecting this to move into this 72 to 73 zone. I don't think we're going to make a new low here on consumer staples. This is definitely a sector that people move into when they think the market is going to move down as a whole. And you can see the strength. We did get all the way up to that August high with the November high, which is something that the other, which is something the other sectors did not do here recently. Moving over to XOP, one of the other strongest sectors here recently. We did get up to the August of 2018 highs. You can see we had that high right at this level, 175 or so which is very close to where we are. We did come up slightly short of that, but we did touch the 144 EMA here on the monthly chart. But you can see the MACD is consistently moving down here. Still quite strong, but this is definitely fading in strength. And it looks like we're going to get a rollover here on the monthly chart. I've been saying that I think this is going to go significantly lower for a while. I'm still looking for this to roll over into that 125, maybe 115 zone, somewhere in there, right on par with these previous lows, at least in the short term. But based on this longer term chart, it's hard to expect this to stop. Even in that zone, you would expect it to move even lower, especially if we get a cross on the 50 line here on the monthly and the MACD crosses that zero line and goes negative. Should expect this to move much, much lower. Looking at it on the weekly chart, very similar. Looking at the MACD, you can see we're past that zero line. Expect a couple more weeks of negative momentum. We did get a retrace already, so you should expect this to continue next week and the week after potentially retest that 50 line here briefly and get the continuation to the downside. It's worth noting that the EMAs are still intact here. We have the 9, 21, 55, and 144 still slightly bullish, despite the fact that we've had a distribution here on the top. And you should expect this to break down going forward. Moving over to semiconductors on the weekly chart, you can see here demonstrating some weakness. I would expect this to push through the 21 EMA here which would get most of the EMAs in lockstep. We already have the 921, then we have the 144 and the 55 here. So not quite all in step yet, but it looks like we're going to continue down. And I would expect at least a double bottom on the longer term charts coming back down to that 173 zone. We did fill the gap that was left here in August. So just barely filled that. Now we're moving down lower. Definitely, in my opinion, going to come in a double bottom on the longer term charts. Of course, that doesn't mean we're going to move all the way through that quickly. This took a long time, basically two months to get that far. And this could certainly continue to do that for the next couple months. Moving over to VNQ or the Vanguard Real Estate ETF. Similar story here. August high, October low, November, December high. And we are now rolling over. Got just below that support this week. Momentum is starting to fade. You should expect this to continue lower coming into this 75, 76 zone at least, getting at least that double bottom. In terms of perspective here, you can see this bottom that we had in October was already at the levels that we saw in October of 2020. Real estate did not recover nearly as high as, say, the NASDAQ or some of those growth stocks. So it doesn't have quite as far to fall. If we come into that zone, I would expect to find some support in that area. Considering how far we've already fallen, that low that we had in October was also very close to the low that we had in December of 2018, some of the lows here in March of 2018. So this is a pretty strong level, and it's taken out a lot of gains over the last decade or so. Moving over to stocks above their 200-day moving average, on the weekly chart, you can see we had a big step down this week. We are still sitting just above the August highs. Again, reiterating that we did have some divergence here. The August high was slightly lower than the November high. So we have more stocks participating in the rally, even if they didn't get up to the same levels, which could potentially give us an indicator of some bullishness in the markets that we might not make new lows. Definitely something to keep in mind. This could, of course, fall off a cliff and come back and retest these zones or even go lower. If they do go lower than that. That's potentially a good indicator that we should be looking to the long side a little bit. And this ratio kind of gives you one of those. This ratio gives you 
And this metric gives you a good indicator of where you are in terms of highs and lows in the market. Moving over to the dollar DXY on the daily chart, I do want to highlight this major trend line that we have. We're currently sitting right at resistance. I would expect at least a small rejection at this point, get a bounce off that 104.50 level and then a continuation higher. I don't think we're going to see lower lows at this point. I think we're probably going to get a bounce and the dollar is going to push a little bit higher, which of course will be bad for stocks. But if you watched my video on Friday, you'll know that I'm very short term bullish as in maybe Monday, as in Monday and maybe Tuesday. So we get slight rejection here based on the daily chart and then a continuation higher. Looking at the MACD here, you can see it's been very sporadic, no major moves, which does indicate a pretty slow downtrend and that this could break either way in the short term. If we do see a very strong break of this on Monday and Tuesday, that should indicate lower prices for equities. And that's something that I will be watching to close those positions fairly quickly on Monday. Moving over to TLT on the weekly chart, you can see momentum is still strong here to the Certainly potential that we see weakness going into next week on TLT. It's not impossible. We did see a slight break of this trend line on the daily chart. We did talk about that on Friday's video. And if that does continue to the downside and the MACD rolls over going on the weekly chart, we can't get above this 50 line on the RSI. We should expect this to come back into this 103.50 zone and potentially even down to 102. And then I would expect to find some buyers in that zone and then a continuation higher. As long as we see indicators from the Fed that they are going to be slowing down their interest rate hikes, which does seem to be the case right now, going into February's FOMC meeting. Moving over to the VIX on the weekly chart, not a lot to add from my Friday video. You can see the MACD on the weekly is stepping down, although it did not step down quite as strongly as it did here on, off of the August highs. Although on the RSI, we did come into a very similar zone for the bottom. If we do get across through the 50 line, that's an indicator of higher prices here in the VIX. And there's certainly potential that we bounce off of this support line and continue higher going into next week. Just something to be watching going forward. Full disclosure, my positions going into Monday are mildly bullish, about 100 deltas to the upside, and 60 thetas here to help protect me if it goes down a little bit. I do think we're going to get a minor bounce. Talked about all of the reasons why that is on Friday's video. And definitely check that video out if you want more detail about that thesis. Let me know down in the comment section what you think we're going to do over the next couple of weeks or months, and how are you positioned going into that period. Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video, and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future content. Of course, none of this is financial advice. It's all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading, and have a great day.